Uh, hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm here with Zenrot. Hello. And I hope you're ready for another story, because it's time for another installment of uh, Storytime with Wookie, aka Day in the Life of Wookie, the only series I have that has exactly two titles to it, <laughs> because I was unable to pick one over the other. And I actually brought in Zen this time, because I feel like this one would have been a very important... Um, thing to have it's not totally because i just so happen to be recording with zen right now and i said hey can we do this real quick <laughs> that's not what happened at all uh, so let's get into it so zen i've been playing a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh master duel which you have been doing the exact same uh, hell yeah i love just that game a lot. yeah really good game and it's bringing me back to my memories of old card games so i figured today for the story i would tell you about the time i was able to i through mal no fault of my own, really, got Pokemon cards banned from the entire elementary school that I went to. <laughs> I like how the story starts with no fault of my own after you said, after I got them banned. <laughs> it really wasn't my fault, and I don't feel like anyone else thought it was my fault either. And I did get, like, there was no repercussions, because I was in fifth grade, so what, what the fuck were the other ones gonna do to me? Beat me down? It didn't matter. Uh, so... <laughs> So we're going to have to go way back in time. I actually wasn't... I'm trying to remember the exact time point, because if I remember right, I think... If I remember correctly, I think I was still in fifth grade by the time it it became... And now I'm afraid of saying it just because I'm afraid of getting demonetized. No, actually, it should be fine. So I'm pretty sure I remember still being in fifth grade because 9-11 happened when I was in fifth grade, and that's how my memory usually works. Is that it's the big events, and I remember still being <laughs> whatever in, big events happened in your life around them. Yeah. yeah, I remember being in the schoolyard after nine eleven, and yeah, no, no, I had to be in fifth grade by were then. You, were you chilling out with the crew? Yeah, truly, I was chilling out <laughs> with the crew, talking about the potential of nuclear war, as you do in fifth grade. As one kid told <laughs> told me that he thought that this was the the beginning of the end times. Get your fucking bunker. He was in fifth grade too, by the way, the kid who was telling me this. So he was telling me, you got to get prepared. We're going to go all out war. And then I think after that, like uh, a 20 minute conversation, his guardian, because I actually knew him and I was friends with him and his guardian because I was a weird kid and I made friends with just basically everyone like an anime protagonist. I think she came up <laughs> and said, I'm so sorry. Ignore everything he said. He's talking out his ass. He doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> And she apologized to my mom, too. <laughs> and she's like, I'm so sorry for him. It's a very hard time so right now. So sorry for my insane son. Uh, so, uh, either son or nephew, something like that. They were related to family, but it's been so many years, I don't remember. Um, but, but that was a fun memory. But yeah, so it had to be sometime either before then or after then, because I, the card game came out in 1999, and I remember the specific cards that caused the incident. Uh, so if you weren't a kid when the Pokemon card game came out or when Pokemon came out, holy shit, did you miss out on absolutely everything? Yeah, like, people always act like Pokemon's just as big now as it was back then. It is not. It is not. It's not. We, it is, it's, it is, it's impossible to be that big. It is impossible for a game to hit so big that kids across the schoolyard through some kind of spy fucking network that some kid in Kentucky and some kid in California both knew that if you check the truck, you might find a Mew back there. <laughs> The <laughs> the network that had established with Pokemon was so huge that it's actually kind of hard to really quantify how insane it was. But like, I remember specifically when it happened because I was seeing someone play. First of all, he had the big ass Game Boy. He didn't even have the color because the color had not been out yet. And I was seeing him play Pokemon. And he said, "You want to try it for a bit?" I'm like, "Sure." And I played Charm. I I got a Charmander. And he's like, yeah, just play. It's fine. Just don't save over the game because Pokemon was a weird game where you could start a new game. And as long as you didn't click save, it didn't technically save over it yet. It was really yep. weird. So I, I I played it and I was a Charmander. and I was like, this is awesome. This is awesome. And then I got to Brock and I was like, I'm dying. This was a bad mistake. <laughs> I have made a lot of. <laughs> Poor Charmander. He really struggled uh, back in the day. He really did. It, did. it took him until, uh, what is it, Fire Red and Leafy Green for them to finally give him a move to take down Fire Types, uh, which was uh, Iron Claw, I think. Because back in the day, you had to either catch another Pokemon or use Ember or get a Charmeleon real quick, <laughs> and the Charmeleon could handle the gym. 
It's actually why I think so many people are such huge Charizard fans, because if you were a fan of Charmander, you really fucking suffered in that first gym. You had to be dedicated to not switch. Yeah, you, well, what you did was you go and get a Mankey. Yeah, Mankey would be the way. Because um, Mankey used to, I think it was only in the originals, but Mankey used to spawn over, um, yeah, like, just to the you, left of Viridian yeah. City, like you were going toward the Pokemon League, but obviously you weren't really, because you yeah. couldn't, but... It's where you That's have where the. It used to, used to spawn. It's where you can have the missable fight with your rival, all right there. Yeah, the optional rival fight. Yeah, yeah, you can get it there. I want to say Nidoran also learned double kick, but I don't. I remember. don't know if it did, but I, I remember Mankey was always the wave if you picked Charmander, which I always did. Yeah, I think what I ended up doing was using Butterfree because it learned Confusion, and that was usually. Yes, enough. you can also use Butterfree because I think that was. I feel like, oh, that was, the, I was, it's not before Bug was weak to rock, but Brock had no rock moves. Yes, it didn't have a lot of, like, things it could really do to Butterfree to yeah. take it down. Um, so, yeah, when Pokemon exploded, it exploded hard, and then when the card game came out, it was the exact same thing. Like, the schoolyard, it was impossible to not find anything Pokemon related. It was just the way of the things. And eventually, I think there would occasionally be some Digimon stuff, too, but it was really mostly just Pokemon um and the thing that i i remember even getting like the first set of packs i don't know how you got into the pokemon card game yourself but i had my mom buy me like the i had is a, such a strong she bought it for me because i wanted it <laughs> it makes it seem like i told her a good point it's <laughs> i like, required her to get this for me <laughs> <laughs> please mother <laughs> i need this <laughs> I got the starter deck, I think, the one that had nine tails, and my sister got the one with Mewtwo in it, because I want to say there was, there was two back in the day. One had Mewtwo, and one had nine tails, I think. Yeah, I, uh... I actually got into the card game because of the video games. Mm -hmm. I think, oh, you know what it was? What got me into the card game was the card game video game, which fucking slams. Yeah, that that game really I does. love that game. That, that game, game is fucking awesome. rules. It is really good. Uh, no, very few video games live up to the precedent that was set with that game where it was like ha technically half a Pokemon game and also half the great. Isn't it sad that the greatest uh, adventure card game ever made was made on the <laughs> Game Boy and never really replicated anywhere else. I know it's really weird. That is so. I really obviously love like the Yu-Gi-Oh games and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but that Pokemon trading card game game is the best card game video game I've ever played in my life. Yeah, and it's a shame we never got the second one because around the time that the second one was coming out, the GBA was coming out, and they were just like. We're not going to release this because it doesn't make any sense and we're not going to sell it. And I was very sad years later when I was 20 yeah, years later. Yeah, what a waste. Yeah, I was like, ah, oh, damn it. It's no, we were such a good game. It's like astonishingly good. Yeah, a lot of fun. Had a lot of cool uh, link cable stuff and things right there. I actually remember trading a G uh, Game Boy game on the, in the schoolyard because back in the day, you didn't go to GameStop to trade games. You actually just went to the person and said, hey, I have like Doug on the, the Game Boy. You want to trade for Pokemon? And if you found someone stupid enough to say, I will gladly play Doug. I love Doug. I want to play Doug the video game on Game Boy. I will trade you for <laughs> one of the greatest Pokemon games ever made. Um... You can get a lot of uh, mileage out of it, and I think that's how I got it. I actually don't think it was Doug, because I still own Doug. Um, I don't remember what game I traded for it, but I do remember having the Game Boy game. Just, I didn't actually buy it. I traded for it. Um, but yeah, so when the card game came out, I had my... The, the, the best card I had was the Ninetales the old nine tails the one i think most people hate because when you see old card pack openings which is how i experience most old pokemon stuff at this point i think they always get sad when it's chancy or if it's nine tails <laughs> it's like the most worthless one out there uh but to me it was one of the uh, one of my favorites uh which is funny because i didn't really like have strong feelings towards nine tails in any way i think it was just literally because it was my only shiny one that i had and i was like that's cool this shiny is good. Yeah, I mean, one. that's just how it is. You're like, yes, yes, this thing. I like this thing. Yes, I like this thing. Let me show my friends. And so what happened was is that when I was on the playground at, I want to say it was recess. It had to be recess. We were all uh, chilling out, hanging out at the schoolyard. Uh, we were playing never really too hard. 
uh, black and classy didn't tell us this <laughs> but sometimes <laughs> you gotta learn it miss because a kid showed up and said hey let's play for cards with an ante basically and i said i don't really think that's a good idea the reason i said that was not because i was afraid of losing my cards because like well if i do lose my cards i'm gonna have a real hard time explaining to my mom why this thing i love i suddenly don't have anymore <laughs> And I can't just say I lost it. I'm like, well, I didn't technically lose. Someone has it, just not me at the moment. So I was very hesitant to kind of go like, "Uh, no, I don't really want to. But he said, like, I'll put up my Gyarados and you'll put up your Ninetales and we'll decide it not like with an actual, like playing the card game. Because actually back in the day, no one in elementary actually knew how to play the card game. We just saw that it had attacks. Yeah, the card game's kind of hard. (laughs) Yeah, it was real hard. Like the concept of energy and stuff, nobody used energy cards. Similar to how when Yu-Gi-Oh! came out, no one was tributing. Mm -hmm. No one used energy cards when I was uh, playing the game in the school. Because it was too easy to guess, I guess, guess brick and not have anything. Uh, So he said, basically, we'll have my Ninetales, your Ninetales go against my Gyarados. And if you win, you get the Gyarados. And I said, immediately, I play Pokemon. And I know that if a Gyarados fought a Ninetales, this would end badly for me. Very badly, actually. So I feel got like this him. is this is not good. But then he got me because he said, "Okay, look at look at my Gyarados. It's got lower HP. And look at your attack. It's got more attack. I really don't got anything. I think you have a good shot at this. The only thing I ask you is that you can't use one of your moves." And at this point, when he said you can't use one of your moves, I was just like, "I don't know if this is actually." I feel like that will be played because now you're telling me I can't use one of my moves, and that makes me feel like I could potentially win if I use this move, which was Confuse Ray. He didn't want me to use Confuse Ray because then he would have to flip a coin to see if he could attack me. And I said, "Well, I don't really know about." This. He's like, "Trust me, man. You're gonna win." And because I was a kid, I was like, you know what? He is saying, trust me, and I'm like in fifth grade. I still have faith in people. <laughs> I think there's a chance for me to win this. I'm going to go for it. So I decided to go for it. <laughs> uh, it happens, and I go, okay. And he's like, I'll even let you go first. I'm like, okay, I'll go first. I attack. He's like, okay, I took a lot of damage. He says, my turn. I use my attack. You have elemental weakness. You're dead in one hit. Uh, I'll take that nine tails now. <laughs> and I went... You're not taking my nine tails. <laughs> You're not getting my nine tails. It's like, what do you mean? I won. I'm like, yeah, that is, you sure did, but you ain't getting this nine tails. <laughs> you no matter what, you're not getting them. And then this started what was basically a manhunt between my friend group and his friend group. And I basically said very quickly because I was not a fast kid. So I got my nine tails. I looked at it. I looked at him. I gave it to my smallest, fastest friend and said, run. <laughs> <laughs> and so he ran the fuck away <laughs> from all of them and everyone was like you son of a bitch and it was like an argument starting and i was like holding some of them back going run 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 go go away and it then started a manhunt because then after that like it was i don't, I don't remember if there was any blows thrown but I definitely remember there being some form of physical contact. Back in the elementary school, I did fight a bunch of people. Uh, and I, I would continue fighting people on and off through middle school. And I think around high school, I stopped <laughs> fighting people. But in elementary school, is, I think, is where <laughs> I got good. most of my fighting in. Yeah, over time, I was just like, eh, I'm too old for this, man. I'm like 16. I don't have the energy in me to throw fists anymore. <laughs> I'm not the upstarting eight-year-old that I used to be <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> um, so the recess bell hits. The, the the bell rings, so we all have to stop fighting and go back to class. And I'm like, well, shit. Uh, there's still an entire lunch period. We did not share the same class, so we didn't have to worry about that. But I'm like, there's an entire lunch period, so we're basically going to hide out. Um, I don't know what's happening. The friend I gave it to, I think I asked, he's like, hey, uh, do you have my nine tails? And he's just like, I don't, I, there was a lot of running and there was a lot of people chasing me. I think I hit it somewhere, so it should be fine. We're going to pick it up during lunch. And I said, okay, cool. And then lunch hits and the dude fucking told on me. And when lunch hits, I get uh, sent to the principal's office and he also (laughs) gets sent and we all get sent. And then basically the principal goes, okay, so... Um, the reason you're here is because he told me this happened. And then when I asked the teachers, they said, yeah, there were a lot of kids just like running around for some reason during 
<laughs> during uh, recess time, and we weren't 100% sure why. <laughs> it felt like someone was being chased. It looked like someone was being chased. And he said, okay, I need you to explain everything. And I basically explained everything. I was like, I feel like I got a bum deal on this. Uh, sir, let me explain to you elemental weaknesses. I did not know that I was going to take double the hits, but we were basically playing card for card. And he goes like, you were playing card for card. And like, yeah, he put up his card. I put up my card. He's like, that's not what I was told. I was told that you stole his card. I'm like, well, it's not his card. <laughs> it's still my card. I refuse to accept the terms of the deal. <laughs> so it's still mine. And he says, okay, where's your card? I'm like, I don't know where the card is. It's gone. And he's like, what do you mean it's gone? I don't know. I have to ask the person who hit it, but it's hidden somewhere. I just don't know where. Um, he goes, okay. And he talks to him and he's like, he, now he's angry at the other guy. He's like, so you were uh, betting cards with people, huh? He's like, uh, 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 uh yes, <laughs> technically, yeah. He's like, how long have you been doing this? He's like, well, the card game came out like a month ago, so <laughs> basically two weeks. <laughs> I've been screwing over kids for two weeks, basically. Uh, and he goes, he goes like, ah. And also, the thing about my principal back in the back in the day, because I actually had two uh, elementary school principals, and um, one of them was called. I actually remember his name, so don't look him up. But his name was Mr. Fukumoto. Uh, he had one eye. He had an eye patch, so I thought he was cool. He was Asian. I remember that. Um, because it's very easy as a kid to remember someone with an eye patch because you go like, holy shit, I've never seen this. But he was a really nice guy, and he was always very understanding and everything. So much, so well loved by the students that when he retired and a new woman uh, uh, lady took over, everyone immediately was like, oh, this school's gone to shit. <laughs> it was like a presidential <laughs> change. When she was actually perfectly... fucking garbage <laughs> this school is garbage i'm done with the, the fifth grade I'm so lucky i'm leaving and you don't have to deal with it you're not here for the golden age when the man with one eye was ruling over us um when she was actually very she was very good she was a fantastic principal as well she cared about us as well she was just a little bit harder than um him or at least in my mind i was like i feel she's being a little bit harder on me but i also think there might have been a little bit of just like a uh woman in charge of me who gets to tell me that because i was like five <laughs> i was like eight and i was an idiot <laughs> so that's what i'll assume <laughs> misogynist child okay <laughs> exactly i had not yet learned i had not fully embraced the woke i was actually just the key i was just the <laughs> it would be years until i would uh eventually learn uh anyway so like i was saying so he was said okay so here's the thing that's gonna happen now these cards are now banned for everyone no one gets to play with Pokemon. He goes like, can I still bring in the po No, they're banned. <laughs> he then had to explain to us what is banning because he's like, I don't think you fully understand what I'm telling you here. But if I see anyone <laughs> with these Pokemon cards at all, I'm taking them and you're not getting them back and no one can have them. And uh, we basically went, okay. And we left knowing full well that we were basically the reasons behind having Pokemon cards no longer be thing. And here's the thing, the, the, the edict was eventually known because he eventually told everyone, to all the kids, basically, if you have any Pokemon cards, do not bring them. They will be confiscated and you will not have them back. And at this point, everyone knew because when you get sent to the principal's office, everyone fucking knows in elementary school. That's just the way it works. <laughs> That's just the greatest network of information is not spies. It's elementary school kids because <laughs> they just know how to spread that <laughs> shit around. So everyone knew that they were banned and that we were the reasons for it. Um, so there was a That's lot tough. of like... Yeah, the the walk of shame back as people looked at me and being like, "You motherfuckers, <laughs> you ruined everything, <laughs> you bastards!" Absolutely. What have you well, done? Now we're gonna have to go back to marbles, which is what we did about a week later, <laughs> and everything was fine. This piece returned to the land. <laughs> so the the end of the story, I went my friend where it was going to be the card where he hit it, and when we got there, it wasn't there. So I didn't even get to keep my card. I lost my card. And at that point I said, this is a valuable lesson. Never again will I ante up anything. Because it really wasn't worth the effort of stuff. And the funny thing is, is I say that, but then when marbles came back, I was putting up marbles because I was like, I don't give a fuck about these marbles. They ain't Pokemon. <laughs> I will gladly give up this cat's life. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> you would have never made it in Battle City. Exactly. I would never have made it in a battle. Uh, if, if, when Weevil put that shit in my deck, I would have been like, I'm not giving you my card or my locator. Fuck you. 
<laughs> you cheated. You clearly cheated me. <laughs> Fuck off. I'm not dealing with this. He's like, what? You, uh, that's not fair. I'm like, what are you going to do? Bring in Kaiba? Kaiba will tear up both our shit and bring it on, bitch. Yeah, Kaiba will just beat you both. Exactly. <laughs> Summon the god card on Weevil and be like, if you beat me, you'll get the ultimate insect. He's like, ah, okay, let's go. So yeah, that's what I remember in Cards Were Banned. And thankfully, I think when Yu-Gi-Oh! came out, the banning... I think the banning only lasted as long as like he was there. So when the new principal came in, Yu-Gi-Oh! cards and Digimon cards were back and everything. Peace was restored to the land, basically. And even though I just literally said, like, damn, she all this went down to shit. It's, she actually did not care about the cards. So she wasn't about to enforce this law that was there before her that she had no reason why it existed. So yeah. Um, that's my story on that specifically. Schoolyard Wokey was an idiot, and <laughs> but he's in some ways a lovable idiot because he is me. Well, everyone's got to learn, right? Yeah, and I learned um, the hard way most of the time, just because I feel like I don't ask a lot of questions, so I just learn by hard, cold facts in the face, and that kind of stayed with me all up until college i want to say <laughs> i did not uh learn many lessons with that but there you go i hope you enjoyed that oh it's a trip back i can't believe i still remember some of it it was a Old very memory lane yeah so i hope you enjoyed Which that everyone. sometimes is shitty <laughs> oh yeah really shitty so i hope you enjoyed one that uh Dodge diatribe talking about 9-11 that's the only time we'll talk about it is in relation to <laughs> me <laughs> Um. <laughs> Wouldn't that be the craziest one day in the life of Wookiee? Let's talk about 9 11, Zed. Let's, let's do it. <laughs> Where were you, Zed, when the powers fell down? Oh my god. Let's talk about the Bush years. That's for the next to the next. Stay tuned for the next episode. <laughs> Where we talk about the impact of the towers coming down on Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, yeah, because there was a lot of... Actually, we could do it. Honestly, we could. <laughs> Talking about specifically. <laughs> not, not about, like, the emotional turmoil, not the war, not the oil, but actually about, like, damn, I can't believe they got rid of the giant Pokemon episode. Because <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of censorship right afterwards, but Damn. <laughs> But that's enough for today. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching it, especially if you made it all the way through. <laughs> we'll be back for another story time. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. And remember, st steel beams can't melt. I don't, I don't even remember what. Jet fuel can't melt steel blue eyes white dragons. Exactly. <laughs> Have you ever seen that Kickstarter of the guy who's like, I want to recreate 9-11? <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah, there was a dude who was like, uh, he started a Kickstarter. He's like, I want to fund because we want we want to know the truth because we've never we don't fully understand the things because this has never happened before again. So we're gonna recreate nine eleven. We're gonna have a plane crash into a place. I want the money to build a giant tower. To, and I think Kickstarter eventually said, No, you're fucking not. You can't do this on our fucking. And they took it down because he was basically saying like, Yeah, I want to recreate it, but he said it like the worst way possible. All right, now I'm, I'm truly done. Bye, everyone. <laughs>